Hallelujah. Mukama fayeva zwe. Atwe bazaka tonda. We bless the Lord this morning. Uh, this afternoon, actually. We are still in the morning. Right. This morning, um, God has been so good. And um, I know he has been good to you. Just as Pastor said, um, realize people call us from uh, from all over. Just recent, just uh, the other day, somebody called me from Kagadi, and uh, was telling me that uh, no, I received your your number from a Heart Institute. I need help, and of course, uh, they received the help. And of course, people from Masaka, all over the country, are people receiving help. So, if there be somebody that you know is close to us as a church, and has a condition that will need surgery, we may not say that. They will receive right away, but um, there's a process that we can go through to see that help can come. Uh, my wife, Joyce, uh, she's out of the country. She went to, she traveled to India. Uh, and she has taken seven families to receive surgery. So God has, God has been so good. But this came as a problem, as many people, uh, even us, as we thought. But we never knew what God is planning out there. And people there are thanking God, and men are giving their lives to Christ because of this ministry. Praise the Lord. And I was amazed that now from Lago, they tell them that to go to round the church in Mokono. Now you have to, literally it is now a church that is being sold out there. So somebody tells you that I've been told to come to around the church. And church of the Balokoli. It is blesses me that people now know that the Balokoli or the one who have solution. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it is very very important. It's very, very important. Um, I never forget a woman that uh, came. Uh, she knew that her child had a problem for a uh, heart problem three months. She was a Muslim. And um, she traveled, she walked in uh, her relatives, friends, of course, Muslim. She went to um, the mosques and uh, town, all the Kampala. They were chasing her. We, we don't have that support. But they told her from Lago when you go to this pastor, you'll get a solution. Praise them the Lord. So the church is in Mokono. Says, and then she came so skeptical because her own people were not given her. But at that time, that is a child we had paid for. But we had changed to take the child to Israel. So that money that we needed somebody to take it immediately. So when she came and she told me, I told her, just go to Heart Institute, tell them that uh, son so has told me. Put him on the surgery list. I remember she collapsed from the office. She could not believe. And she got saved there and then. Praise the Lord. So I know that God, has, um, we as a church, is going to cause us in many ways to get to the people and then change the lives of people. And we want to use you. And as Pastor said, we need to agree with God. We need to agree with God. You don't know the capacity you have until you learn to agree with God. When Pastor says that he's pastoring billionaires, it is not to pastor billionaires for a show. 
no one is going to show off that I'm a billionaire. But I'm seeing nations changed. I'm seeing the gospel preached because somebody here is going to finance for the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we want to share briefly about the power in agreement. You know, for a while I've not been attending second service as many of you know. I have um, just since the lockdown, actually even before lockdown, we've been moving to our sister church every Sunday. Uh, and I, I was amazed because I was, as we have been working through God has changed and is blessing Rubugum. I will ask you to go and visit those people. Things are changing. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember for uh, one month ago we started to share about the power of words. So today actually I was supposed to share with them about the power of agreement. Praise the Lord. So that's the message I wanted to share with us. The power of agreement. The power in agreement. There is too much power in agreement. And you cannot understand that power until you realize that God is working. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we bless you. We glorify your name for this afternoon. With the humility and the spirit we submit to the authority of your word. We pray that you cleanse us and purify us. And Lord, that you put us into the inheritance that we, need, we have among the beloved and the sanctified. I bless you for the hearing of your word. I bless you for the blessing you have released already upon your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's start off in the book of Amos chapter 3. Amos was not a prophet by, by inheritance. That his father was a prophet. Oh, his father's father was a prophet. And therefore he was trained to be a prophet. But uh, Amos was called to be a prophet. Because of the need that was in Israel. There was no a prophet that time in the days of Amos that will challenge the status quo that will cause people to understand that they are putting the standard of God down. So the Bible says, I would want you to go back and read the book of Amos. It is a quite very small book. Many people regard, uh, the scholars regard it as a minor prophet. But for me, I don't know major and the minor prophet. Because every word is major. Hallelujah. Every word of God is major. So the Bible says in Amos chapter 3 from verse 1 it says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Just give it to us in a amplified part three. Part three says in amplified. Do two walk together except they make an appointment and have agreed? If you have another version, I don't know whether you have the message. Do you have the message? The message has a, an interesting. Um, I don't know. Do you have the message? Message, right? yeah, okay. Give give me the message. It is interesting. Verse three. Um, the message says, do two people walk hand in hand? If they 
aren't going to the same place. The people agree to walk hand in hand. If they are not going in the same place, remember it is God speaking. And he's speaking the house of Israel. And he's telling the children of Israel. And he's speaking to them. And he's declaring to them that it is you that I have known. I have had a relationship. You could not believe that I can save you. You could not believe that I could do miracles for you. And therefore you wanted to serve Pharaoh and his people. And I saved you with a mighty hand. The Bible says, in one night, they came out rich. In one night, they came out as an army. In one night, they came out as victorious. In one night, they came out as people who are um, whose terror is upon all the earth. Every person that heard about Israel was much afraid about Israel. Not because Israel was great. Not because Israel was so powerful. Not because Israel was a mighty nation. But because Israel had decided to agree with God and to move to the promised land. Because Israel had decided to see the purposes of God as they go forward. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that God worked miracles in Egypt. Not because Israel was believe, they were believers. He had to convince them. Because he cannot go with people to where he wants to go with them when they are not in agreement. When they are not in one, one spirit. When they don't see what he sees. Yes, God was seeing the Red Sea. He was seeing the giants there. He was seeing problems ahead. But God wanted them to know that as much as they are with God, there is no challenge bigger than their God. There is no situation above their God. So God wanted them uh, to understand that if we agree to walk together, we shall reach wherever I want you to reach. Blessed the Christian church. I suppose that this message is good for us. That God has intended us to move forward. And God wants you to move forward. But do you agree with him? I was telling people in the first service that people cry about corona. And some people don't want even to come to church. Others are saying no, corona is in the community. Yeah, that's the fact. The corona is everywhere. And by the way, if we took you for examination, you just thank God that maybe you just got, got healed. You might have been a victim of corona. But why didn't it kill you? Because you chose to agree with God. Praise the name of the Lord. So what I'm talking about today, agreement. Agreement, power in agreement. The power in agreement. So Amos says, Amos can two walk together except they be agreed. So God was telling Israel, we have walked, we have moved, I remember the days when in Egypt and you are not a people, we agreed. I took you out. But now you have become complacent. The way you look at, the way you look at things is very different. He says, can we go forward? Can I move with you? Except we come to a place of agreement. Now God does not, want, does not just want your agreement by you saying, uh, I agree God. Let's go. The argument God is talking about is what we want to talk about this afternoon. The Bible says it this way. When you come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1 
First Corinthians chapter 1. But Corinthians chapter 1. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 1. But Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. But Corinthians chapter 1. Let's read verse 11. Or a common name. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, verse 11 says, Or a common name, or a gamba. Um, for, sorry, 2nd Corinthians, not 1st Corinthians. Monsonyi, wako bakoli nse echo kubiri. Se echi soka. It is 2nd Corinthians. Bakoli nse echo kubiri. Chapter 1. Esule soka. Second Corinthians chapter one. Bakoli nse choko bili. Esule soka. Okay, let's read uh, from the interest of our time. Let's read from verse nineteen. To sama kuva kure kumi no moenda. The Bible says. Bible yega. From verse nineteen. Kure kumi no moenda. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me. Silvanus and Tim, uh, Timothy was not was not yes and no but in him was yes just read it for us in Uganda first Uganda luga amanti hmm? kubango mwana wa katonda Yesu Kristo yes fegwe twabulira mumwe yes zenesirwano ne Timotheo hmm. te yali nti we wawo mm-hmm. atenti si we wawo hmm. na emu ye buli jo mulimu we wawo now, it is interesting that when Paul is speaking to the Corinthians, because the Corinthians, their mind was not so different from our minds. They looked at situations that there are things that God can do and there are things that God can't do. There are promises that can come to pass and some promises cannot come to pass. So God can say no or he can say no. Yes. So they had this mind. As people always say, when you go to pray, expect three things. Either yes, or wait, or no. That's a lie. That's a lie. God can never say no when his promises are yes. Do you hear me? Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Jesus everything preached in Jesus it is not no and yes but it is only yes. It is only yes. That means to God every promise in Christ is yes. Do you want it? It is yes. Do you want to have it? It is yes. But me I have to play role in agreeing. Why I don't have it, why I'm not in, into it, it is because I have a limitation on, on, my, on my side. Maybe my faith is small. Maybe I don't, I, 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 I doubt the word. The way I think about the scriptures is, there might be a number of reasons. But on the side of God, every promise is yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now verse 20, the Bible says, for all the promises of God in him, who? Jesus, right? For all the promises of God in him, are yes. And in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Please give us uh, verse 20 in Amplified. In Amplified, the Bible says, Amplified, okay, for as, for as many as are the promises of God. If you can think about the promises of God, as many as they are, however many they are, God cannot say I'm now out of capacity. I cannot fulfill all this. The Bible says, as many as the promises of God in Christ, they are yes. Hello? Mumpulira. Mumpulira banange? 
If you're hearing me say, Amen. praise the Lord. The promises of God in Christ, the promises of God, according to that verse in, um, place the screen, is, uh, screen is off, okay? For as many as there are the promises of God, they all find their yes. Answer in Him, Christ. Every promise of God, every promise God has ever given to you, it finds its yes. Is found only in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So that means Chitegeza. outside Christ e you may not have these promises oh, as much as you may claim them. The Bible says for this reason um, for this reason we also utter the Amen which means so be it to God through him in the person and by his agency to the glory of God. When God says yes you say if God says yes how do you respond? Amen. When God say yes, and also say amen, the amen means so be it. I agree with you. Have you said 2020 is good, the year of good news? Is it from you, God? Yes. Yes. President of the Lord. There's a scenario where Peter had spent the whole night and he was with his friends they were uh, they fished the whole night and caught nothing and in the morning he's cleaning up his net very tired and very sad but the Bible says at that moment Jesus asked him for a boat and he began to preach. He began to speak his word. He began to declare the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, after he had preached, he tells Peter, launch into the deep for a catch. Peter says, Master, we have labored the whole night, but we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I shall lead the nates. Nevertheless, at your word, what is he saying? In my mind, situations say, no. I have labored the whole night. But at your word, what you have just declared, I say amen. I will do it. I'm going to lay down the nates. You all know the story. That Peter Called too much. Let me speak to you boldly that when we are going to receive from the Lord, God desires that we agree with Him. We agree with Him by faith in His word. Faith is not passive, faith is very active. Putting the word of God in action is not a passive thing. You must be very deliberate. You must be dedicated. It is not a one-time thing for you to say I have faith. Praise the Lord. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of the things not seen. That's faith. Now, if you say you have faith to be a billionaire, do you see it? 
Do you have any dollars? Do you even have an account? Even shillings you don't have. If you have the account, you, they, they, you take in your card, your ATM card, they just tell you you have insufficient balance. Insufficient balance. Even from insufficient balance, you have to pay something because the bank is demanding you. And here the word of God is saying, you are a billionaire. You a billionaire. What will you respond to? Or not the the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So us agreeing with God. That's what we call faith. That's what we call faith. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And verse 7, the Bible says it this way. Ecclesiastes 4, then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. Now, it is interesting, you just need to follow. It says in verse 8, there is one alone. Now, this statement, one alone, does not just mean that somebody is just there alone. But somebody who feels in this world is alone. He's born again. He's a child of God. But every time, will God remember me? I think in this world I'm alone. Even God is very far from me. That is vanity. According to Ecclesiastes. And says, without compassion. He had neither son, nor a brother, yet there is no end to all his labors. Nor is the eye satisfied with his riches. But he never, he never asks, for who do I toil and deprive myself of good? This also is vanity and a grave, uh, and a grave misfortune. Okay, next verse. Next verse. The Bible says, Bible gamba. Two are better than Babiri one. Omu. Two are better than Babiri one. Omu. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one. Babiri I want to, to say this. Gamba chino. As we talk about agreement, the first thing we need to understand how to agree with God. There must be an agreement with God. God wants to do a lot of things here. And he has all the ability to do them. But he is looking out for somebody with whom they can agree to work on the earth. Praise the Lord. So when he wants to bless the people, like as Pastor shared that uh, friends that will receive through Kaniel, you know you hear in India, everyone is saying love without boundaries. Oh, those people are a blessing. In Cambodia, even mighty China, and you know everyone, and also in Uganda, and everyone is saying love without boundaries. But this is one person, when I talked to, when I talked to the CEO, she told me that Ronald, the Lord spoke to me. And he told me that every child count. So it doesn't matter how much, but if you partner with me, I want to make every child in every nation count. Now I just said, my God, if this was praying from Blessed Christian Church, she would have been a billionaire, billionaire a long time. Because we, we, this is the dream of Blessed Christian Church to bless the whole world, right? Praise the Lord. The Lord. No, but you know, God works with people who agree with Him. God wants you to agree with Him. There's need and we would want to use you to meet that need. So you must agree with God. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is important. The two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. And next verse, next verse the Bible says, 
For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but who to him who is alone, when he falls, for, uh, when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they shall keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? So it's literally not talking about getting somebody that you get warm. It's talking about uh, now this, the Bible says every word is spirit uh, inspired, right? Every word of God is spirit inspired. So that means God has a meaning why he gives, gives us this word. God wants somebody, uh, your heart to be connected with him that you may be warm with him. That he can be able to do things for God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Can someone walk with another except they have been agreed. Amos chapter 3 let's read verse 7 and 8. We need to agree with God. You need to agree with God. Blessed Christian Church. One of the agreements we must accept 2020 it's a year of good news. How many believe with me that 2020 is the year of good news? Don't tell me that there is corona. Corona, God knew that it was coming and even never gave it to the, any prophet. Every, any prophet that tells you that he saw corona, he will be lying. No one saw corona coming. But we, we knew that God, uh, but we knew from the start of the year that this is a year of good news. What was God saying? That you don't need to know about Corona. You need to know about the good news. Praise the Lord. Children of God, we take too much time on the negative and on the problem and how the problem is big and yet God is saying, focus on the good news. You have good news. How? What good news? When my job is gone. What good news? When I have nothing to eat. What good news? I want to tell you boldly, I have never seen God work for me. Since I got saved, physically accept this year of 2020. 2020 has been to me and my house and it is to me as my, and my house a year of good news. By 31st December, I will still have good news. Praise the Lord. I was giving a testimony the other time that God was able to give us a car. Somebody just handed over the key. Just this is your car. And God just never gave us the car. Fuel paid for. Not for one month. Not for two months. But as long as I want to travel, you have the fuel. Isn't that God working? You know, when He says it is good news, when He brings a car, He will also supply fuel. That's what we're talking about. Praise Him the Lord. And God just said, Wait, wait. And He just gave us two plots of land. Double, double coming. Double. So I'm expecting something. I will testify. I will testify before the end of the year. Praise them the Lord. I'm not bragging just, just to make you that uh, I'm just telling you where we are here in Blessed Christian Church. That's where the prophetic happens. You don't need to go and consult a prophet somewhere. The prophet is right in the house. And God used him and said this is a year of good news. I just said my wife we take this. Now it came because I, I work at UCU. You know, you know, UCU has about, I think, 15, uh, 
about 1500 workers and when corona came they just told every one of us Joshua can agree with me you have no contract now that has been the only source the only place to eat from I sat home as the boys would just ask for it for something to eat. You know you cannot get it anywhere in the account. You cannot tell anybody that send something for me. Because everyone corona is everywhere. You just say Musumba Arthur. Corona. corona. Praise them the Lord. Amen. I just said, my God. So what am I going to do? And then God began to speak to me that your security is not in your job. Your security is not in a business. Your security is in me. Your security, child of God, is not in the job you're crying for. Your security is in the Lord. So when you agree with him, it does not matter what situation it is. When God spoke to Israel and took them out of Egypt, he had not told them that there's a Red Sea. He had not told them that there are giants there. He had not told them yet that you're not going to face A, B, C, D. But he wanted them to agree with him that them with him, they can meet any challenge and overcome. Praise the Lord. You with Jesus, you are able to to take on any challenge. You are able to take on any giant. But agree with him. Praise the Lord. And this agreement must not be a one time that you came to service today and say I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with God now. It must become a lifestyle. Our local believers stop crying. We know you have problems. But learn to believe God who changes things. Say amen. Learn to trust God. Learn to learn God. If it's the same God who has Moses and you're reading about Moses and it's the same God and you're reading about Moses and you are saying Jesus is yesterday, today, and forever. But yet you are talking about Jesus, the God of Moses. But there's a God who wants to do your days. There are things he wants to do now. Those he wants to do bless now. Be our Moses. So that God can use you. So that we can see him. Praise the Lord. Become the Moses. Because Moses was also like us. He was a man like us. But he dared to believe God. He dared to seek God. To agree with God. That's why when he decided not to agree with him, God said, Moses, even you, at least these ones, I would, uh, they will go into the promise. Even you, you failed to agree with me before these people. And you just did what I didn't want you to do. Praise the Lord. And God said you are not going to go into the promised land. Because he failed to agree at the last. And the agreement is what God says you have to say yes. You have to say amen. What God says you don't fathom in your mind. You don't think about it. Take it. So God has said it. And people will say you're mad. Let them call you mad. As long as you're not throwing stones, you speak well. Praise the Lord. Let them call you mad. This man got mad. They will be the ones to say, His God is alive. His God is alive. How did you do it? Praise the name of the Lord. My, my friend called me. Because all of us lost the contract. And told me, how are you doing? My side things are bad. 
I said, how my side things are so good. This is a guy who was always saying that you are always in charge, you are always about Jesus. Will you eat Jesus? Time came when I was telling him, this Jesus he told me to eat. I am eating him real. This man I am eating him real. I said, you guy, everyone is crying. How did you get the car? You, you have worked in UC for 10 years. This is Jesus I'm eating. Yes, you told me it is Jesus. It is him. Let me tell you boldly. Let's acquaint ourselves with him. And we shall see his work. So agree with God. I agree with God. And for us to agree with God. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. The Bible says, We shall be established. Says, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. When you are going to agree with God, God wants you to be established in him. So by faith, be established in God. Something established it is measured as established by forces that hit it. Praise the Lord. You cannot say that this house is strong unless there are some earthquakes that shake it and it cannot come down. That means that this house is strong because it has gone through tests. And now it is established. Amen. Amen. Be established with God. The Bible says be established. Hallelujah. Amen. Number, number two there. For us to be able to agree with God, the Bible says in First John, we always read this verse. First John chapter five. You, if you have time, you go back and read the whole chapter. But you're going to read a few verses. Verse four, the Bible says. The Bible says in verse four, for whoever. It, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Now he's saying here whatever is born of God overcomes the world. But the world has turmoil. The world has sorrows. The world has challenges. How can this that is born of God overcome? Praise the Lord. You need to read down and understand. You need to have the witness. You have to understand there is a witness that you are an overcomer. Understand the witness that you are an overcomer. Let's read verse 6. Verse 6, the Bible says, the point is, understand that he you have a witness. Not, not just that I testify to I, the Lord. By the way, that, that verse we read in, uh, in um, Revelation chapter 12 that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. It is not the testimonies we give in church. That now I testify I got a car so I have overcome. No, 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 no. no. That is just something small. When it says they overcame by the word of their testimony it's the word of God which has become their testimony. The word of God has become their anchor. So they overcome by the blood and by the word. 
Do you get what I'm talking about? You don't overcome because you have said I thank God I got a car. I thank God I got land. That's not where the victory is. The victory is in the word. Praise the Lord. So every, every, we go on and give testimony and we forget that it is the word that has the victory. All these other things we glorify God they spring from the word. The Bible says in verse 6 this is he who came by the water. Or five. Let's go back verse 5 to understand. The Bible says, Who is he? Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. How many believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Praise the Lord. Can you give the Lord a hand of praise? Because you have overcome the world. Everyone that believes that Jesus is the Son of God, he has the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen to verse 6. The Bible says, this is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. Okay, let's continue. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, for you to be an overcomer, for you the world to know that you are an overcomer, it is not that you have too much money, not that you are so much rich, but the world knows that you are an overcomer, the demons know that you are an overcomer, because there is a witness in heaven, the Father witnesses, the Word witnesses, and the Holy Spirit witnesses, that one has overcome the world. The word of God. The word of God is your witness. Agree with the word. And the Bible says, when just go back, the Bible says, and the three agree in one. So, Jesus in, the, in heaven is called the word. That's why somebody dies here and directed to heaven. And because he has witness there. The devil cannot go there and begin to say no, 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 there is a witness there that this has overcome the world. But for you and me, who are still here, don't we need witness here on earth? Hello? Amen. Don't you need witness that you are an overcomer? Let's look at verse 7. Uh, verse 8, okay. The Bible says, and there are three that bear witness on earth. You have a witness on earth. When they say that you have overcome, the, the witnesses that are speaking, and you have to agree with them. And the Bible says, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Did I hear an amen? The spirit, the blood, and the water. Now, we don't have time to go into that. But these three, they are very essential for your security as a believer. The Bible says, when we, uh, when we are born again, we need to be baptized. You need to know a little more why you need to be baptized. But we are also washed by the blood. So what does it mean? That we accept Jesus, he washes our sins, and when we are washed, that witness says, Ronald is washed. That one is washed. He has no sin. But I need more witness. Because our witness of two or three will be... Uh, the battle will be established. So I will need to be baptized. Praise the Lord. To declare that I have not been washed. But I have died to sin. And I have been buried with Christ. And I am dead to the world. I am dead to the world. I am dead to the world. And then the third one. 
who is the spirit because Jesus Christ when he died he went down to the grave he was raised by the power of the Holy Spirit now the life he has cannot die so that the three the third one the Holy Spirit, when He comes and resides in you, and raises you from sin, raises you from the dead, wherever you walk, the demons know. That one, He has a testimony of God. That one is untouchable. It is not you saying that I, I, I overcame fornication. No, 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 no. The one who is in you is stronger than the one who is in the world. That's why you are an overcomer. But do you know that? That's where your victory is. Agree with God. Agreed. That's where your security is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to agree with God. Agree with God. Bear his testimony. Bear his witness. That means, if I knew that, that I'm washed and I'm baptized and the spirit dwells in me. So a situation, where are you? Now you can say problem where are you? Oh, you have come. We had we had a brother. I understood this when I went through the situation. Concerning my son. This brother, when we are in senior five, senior six, he used to tell me, Ronald, you know what I tell to the problems? When the problem comes, I sit here. It was called Gita Emmanuel. I sit here and say, hey, problem. You're welcome. Do you want a seat? I have none. So you can stand. When you feel tired, you can go back. So I, I thought this guy, what is he talking about? Until I realized that there are problems that come and it will stand in your way. Not for one month, but for years. And you're seeing it there. It is not tired of standing. It will stand there. And you are not progressing. You will need a testimony of God in your heart and spirit that you are an overcome. That is agreeing with God. That's why Jesus said have faith in God. When you have faith you will say to this mountain be removed. Because it is standing in your way. Get away from here. Vow. And if you don't doubt, but you believe whatever you say, whatever you confess, so you can't agree passively. You, you agree by speaking. You agree by talking. You will talk. You will talk. Even, even people may not understand you. People may call you mad. Continue to talk. Talk to your situation. One day, you are going to be the one encouraging us. This God is able to work. And by the way, that day is in this 2020. That day is in 2020. That day is in 2020. I said that day is in 2020. There's somebody who was telling us, as you have heard Pastor Arthur say, this year, when we started, it was 2020. Twen what? Twen what? Twen twen. Mm. We're trying to march. We're trying to march. It became 2020. By the time we came there in uh, April, May, we had gone back to Biri Abiri. We had gone back to Biri Abiri. Because it became a little, a little hard. Let me tell you. If you started when it was 2020, it is going to end as 2020. I don't know whether somebody understands what I'm saying. <laughs> it has not changed. It is the same year. This year. Somebody told me, I have erased this year from my, my life. I said, you're lying. This year, if you have been 20 years, we shall be counting 21 in 2020. 
So there are people who live in denial. Accept the word of God. Walk with God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number two. Because what we said we agree with God. Number two. Shortly we just need to talk about agree with yourself. You know the biggest challenge. Pastor, that is not the devil. The devil has no power. Because Jesus overpowered him for us. He has power over the non-believers. But if you are a believer, the devil has no power whatsoever. It is you who might give him the power. If you don't agree with God. The Bible says, in Romans chapter 8, Verse 38. Romans 8, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created things, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. Who is speaking these things? Paul. Paul. is saying what I have gone through. Now, for us, before before we see that, let's let's first look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. What does he say? He says, Is it first Corinthians? Okay. Um, go to 11. 11. Did I quote it wrongly? Okay, 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 okay. First Corinthians. To, sorry, to the Second Corinthians. Why? Bakorin se Yes, to the Second Corinthians. Okay, it says, yes, we had sentence of death in our lives, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who has uh, raised us, uh, who raises the dead. Just go back to verse uh, the previous verse, previous verse. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren of our trouble which came upon us and to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure above strength so that we despaired even of life. Apostle Paul is saying they went through challenges that even they began to worry about their life. The challenges were so serious until he came to understand and learn where we just read, where we read, um, before we read this one, where it says, I have come to know neither this nor that that can separate me because he has gone through it and he has acquainted himself with the Lord and he has agreed with his spirit it does not matter whether God comes out for me or not. God loves me. Praise the Lord. That is a very important victory for you to agree with God that nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing. No challenge can separate you from the love of God. He cares for you. Praise the Lord. So be persuaded in your mind. mind. Be persuaded and convinced in your mind. The Bible says that we must count him faithful, judge him faithful. Hebrews 11, verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself also conceived strength to conceive seed, received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was 
past age because he judged him faithful who had promised. Praise the name of the Lord. Sarah judged him faithful who had promised. Sarah ya, ya Let's just in, in, in 30 seconds tell you about who Sarah is. When, when you read Sarah Genesis chapter 18, you realize that uh, there were three men that came to Abraham's home by invitation of Abraham because they were, going, they were on their way going somewhere. And these men when they came in verse 8, Genesis chapter 18, one of them spoke which we know that is the Lord. The Bible says and verse uh, 18 verse 8 then said to him then he, they said to him then they said to him so the three men said to him where is Sarah your wife? So he said here in the tent the next verse and he said, no, it is interesting. The first one says, and they said to him, where is Sarah your wife? And then he says, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life and behold, Sarah your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Praise the name of the Lord. And now Abraham and Sarah were old and past the age of past, uh, bearing. And then the Bible says down there that Sarah laughed. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? After being old, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And then after Sarah laughed. Now, the next verse, second. the Bible says, and the Lord said to Abraham, did not say to Sarah, because Sarah was not in the conversation, but because Sarah is also a part to agreement, because Sarah will play an important role, she must also agree. God cannot work with Abraham alone. God must work with Abraham and Sarah. So when God speaks to Abraham, he includes Sarah also, because God wants them to agree together. And the Bible says, and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? saying shall I surely bear a child since I'm old so God tells Abraham never told Sarah he told Abraham but your wife has, has laughed but the Bible says Sarah had laughed in her heart praise the Lord so that means her heart had not believed had not judged him faithful so then God began to speak to him and then verse, the next verse, I think it is 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied it. Saying I did not laugh for she was afraid. And he said no. But you did laugh. No, but you did laugh. Praise the Lord. So she laughed in her heart. Even many of us laugh in our hearts. When a prophetic comes, you laugh in your heart. Yeah. You have good news. <laughs> 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 you have good news. Who the pastor has not seen you laugh? Who will see you laugh? The pastor who said, didn't see you laughing. <laughs> Pastor comes up with no good words. Yale yale. <laughs> this year he has also come up with some. <laughs> That's how we laugh inside. God hears such. But and then we will say, why have you laughed? Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody hearing me today. I don't know whether you have laughed at any promise. Because you see it is very far from coming to you. I'm here to tell you. The God of Isaac. The God of Abraham. Is able to bring it to pass. Is able to do it in your life. Is able to cause it to come to pass. Agree with him.
Acquaint yourself with him. Just agree. Said, yeah, you said I am going to have a child. I take it. One year I don't have a child. Two years I don't have a child. It's not a problem. Not my problem. It is your problem. For me, I have a child. For Abraham, God told him, you are no longer Abraham, but you are Abraham, the father of many nations. So every day, he has no son. But he calls himself, I am the father of many nations. I am the father of many nations. His confession changed. His speaking changed. He became a prophet of his life. He began to prophesy by himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When you realize that you have reconciled yourself, Finally, you agree with the prophet. Agree with the prophetic. The third one, agree with the prophetic. Praise the Lord. The Bible talks about two, uh, two people. The Bible says about a woman who had the blood. She spoke to herself. She changed her life. But the Bible says in... Um, in Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. The Bible says it this way. That by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of bondage. By a prophet, Israel was in bondage for 400 years. But God, in all his might, he chose to bring the prophetic. He chose to bring the the declaration of his word. Hello. Amen. Because the prophets in the Old Testament, they are the ones who declare the word of God. So he decided to bring up a, a, a preacher. The Lord, let my people go. I said, let my people go. Just words. Moses' words. You're just speaking words. Who is the Lord? Let my people go. Moses never stopped to declare. He declared every day. Until the night when the Pharaoh said, You go. Let me speak to you boldly. By the word of prophecy, you can get out of your body. And two, by words of a prophecy, you are able to be preserved. It will preserve you in seasons and times. So believe the, prophet, the prophetic word. Believe the word of God that has come into your life. And three, you need to learn to walk in the word. Fight the good fight. First, um, first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. The Bible says uh, Paul was talking to Timothy. And the grace of that's it. Uh, Timothy 1.18. And I charge this charge I, I commit to you, son Timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. So you can fight a good warfare based on the prophecies. The Lord you say, God 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 you say, Praise the Lord. In my house, we have taught ourselves every day to stick on the prophetic. One of the prophetic words we received this year was to say that this, this year God is going to bless you. That was a house prophecy. God is going to make you touch nations. I don't remember whether you remember the prophecies. But we have, my wife is very keen when times come on the 31st when they are laying hands on us and And God is going to amaze you. 
2020 God has amazed us That was a prophetic word inside the good news President the Lord so I want to encourage all of us Let's agree with the Lord Change the way you speak Change the way you declare Let's speak as God wants us to speak. And let's agree with him. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and bless you for your faithful and your just. For Sarah had laughed in her heart because she looked at her condition. She looked at her situation and she said, Lord, probably you are talking about somebody else. Probably you are just encouraging us. You are just speaking good words to us. But the Bible says, Sarah judged you to be faithful. Then she received strength. Lord, I pray everyone that has heard this word that they will agree with you because every word and every promise in you is yes and amen is spoken by us. We say amen to good news. We say amen to progress. We say amen to provisions. We say amen to your goodness. We say amen in the name of Jesus. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just appreciate God with uh, such a powerful and we say Amen.